<laughs> that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Straight Red Card. We're here to do the U.S. Men's National Team versus Jamaica game review. Hey. I got one. I got one word for you, Brett. And it's a word you're going to agree with. G O. Yeah. Okay, haters, suck that one long and hard. Like suck it until Raina splashes. Yeah, he shouldn't. Your he face. shouldn't. He shouldn't have been included in this roster, quite frankly. Shouldn't, shouldn't have been, been on the roster. Show. Shouldn't have played. Shouldn't be on the roster. I mean, go back further. Should never play for the U.S. Men's National Team again. Like that moron in our fucking intro yeah. says. Yeah. God damn it. Because of what? Because of what his parents did. I, all right, one curse word is all you can say. So I'm going to yeah, stop I'm, right there. Not. Clean. Right. Clean, clean from right here now. on out. Yeah, clean from yeah. here on out. So, again, we talked about this in the live stream. Our our stance on this was consistent. Yes. We would start Geo, but if Malik got start if Malik got to start over him, we'd understand. Simply because Geo wasn't playing for his club. Yep. Malik's been doing well with PSV. He started but, this match uh, in we had a tale of two different uh, halves there. But both of us said, well... We're starting Reina. Yeah. But we were understanding of those who said, I'm going to start Tillman. I'm going to award him or reward him for his great play at PSV. Okay. Well, you did. You got it. You got what you wanted. That amounted to a heap full of nothing. Should have had a goal. Yeah. I mean. Tap. A simple tap. Couldn't score. Couldn't score. Yeah. And it wasn't until Reyna came on the pitch that things started to change. Now, they didn't change enough because we were still down one nothing going into the 90th minute. 94th? Fifth. 95th minute? They were very gracious. I was wondering if they are going to let us have that corner kick. Um, I feel like that would be it'd been really bad form if they didn't let you have the corner kick, even if it is at the end of stoppage there. I mean, it was five minutes and 30 seconds when that corner kick was taken. Yeah, and I know. it took like 30 seconds for him to get the ball over there and place it. Somehow. Somehow, Miles got his head on it. Mm -hmm. It ricocheted off of... Corey Burke. Poor Corey Burke and went in the goal. Mm -hmm. And now it's a whole new ball game. It's a whole brand new ball game. But the simple fact of the matter is, Brett, you had to summarize the game, you would just call it impotence. Impotence in the final third for the whole game. Mm -hmm. The whole game. Yeah. Well, we, we again, we talked about this at the end because we did do a bit of a summary, but our our, gen, our normal key players, you know, Polistics, McKinney, the Weyas, Jedis, all of Musas, all of which were shadows of their, of their, of their quality selves. They right. weren't there. It simply wasn't working. Um, and it, that was the problem. Because we only we only really gave up one good opportunity. And yes, they capitalized on that one opportunity. We had something like... We had dang well, near, you forgot uh, the, break, eight, the breakaway that Richards gave up. That's true. That's true. That should have been Turner a goal. Have to, Turner did have to come up big on that one. If that's 2 nothing, then we're really done. Oh, we would have been screwed at that point, yeah. We've been, we would have been done. Over. Absolutely so, done. Yeah, we uh, we made our, we made our subs, and it was a, it was a uh, survival of the fittest in that sense. We had the high, we had the better quality of players sitting on the bench that could come in and add you know pace to the, you know fresh legs and just wear them down. And eventually, we got the tying goal. Once we got the tying goal, and we went into stoppage time or overtime, I knew it was going to come. I knew we were going to get the goals. It was going to happen, guaranteed. Yeah, I mean, once we got that in there, I knew that Jamaica would have to open up in uh, extra time and once they opened up you knew goals were coming well they they um, had they had they had to open up once haji got his first goal that's when they really opened up because at that point they could have still kept playing for pks i don't, don't think they would catch on the counter yeah they didn't totally shut down though and that still allowed us to score the second goal um they didn't totally fall back into a low block and go we're no. just going to play for pks i felt like they felt they could still sneak another one in there and 
win the game. Um, but throughout once the match, we scored, though. once we scored the second one, you're absolutely yeah. right. I mean, throughout they had the, yeah. they had to open up. I mean, at the beginning of the match, you saw that they're coming out with the five four one. You're sitting there going like, "Well, are they going to sit back and just try to counter on us?" No, they didn't. And in fact, quite frankly, when we were in our defensive half, they pressed and pressed and they pressed. pressed, and they didn't drop back to a low block until um, we got over the half. <laughs> we got into the final third. They would, yeah, they would not. They were not playing a low block. They weren't like saying, "Okay, okay, go ahead and have the ball." At, mid, at, at half field and do whatever you want. And we're just going to sit in the final third. No, if we had the ball at midfield, they were still playing a, a, a mid block. And it wasn't until we were able to somehow work the ball into the final third, they would drop into that low block. But here's what's frustrating, Brett, about the whole 90 minutes, 95 minutes before the accidental goal. It's like, how many times on this show can we talk about when the other team has possession, however infrequently it is, and in this case, it was like 30% of the 20%. game, 28% or whatever it ended up being. It was 20, about 20%. I think we had 20, like yeah. It was 23%, if I can remember. That's not a whole lot of possession. But there were times, plenty of times, when Jamaica did have possession and were working their way up the field and were more spread out. We gained possession. We stole the ball. And guess what we didn't do? We didn't transition quickly. Quickly, mm -hmm. We did not hit them quickly on transition. No, we allowed them. We kicked it around and said, oh, let's keep possession. Here you go, Miles. You have the ball. Oh, no, Chris, you have the ball. Oh, Chris is going to pass it out wide to Scally. Scally's going to pass it back to Chris. Chris is going to pass it over to Miles. Miles is going to pass it over to Jedi. And by the time we do that, they're back in their block. What? Idiocy. Now, I don't know. Is Brett, is, uh, excuse me, is Greg, is Greg making this a priority? Quick transition? Quick well, we hit? didn't learn anything. We didn't learn anything from the Trinidad and Tobago game at all. No. The same thing happened. And same same oh, game. We, for every five passes that we made, they only made one. We had almost a thousand passes. They had just yep. over 200 some odd. Yeah. So you want to know, like, how is it possible? How is it possible that you have almost 80% possession and can't capitalize? Well, that's because we did exactly what you were saying. Just playing with it, back and around, back and around, back and around, cross it, oh, get the ball back, back and around, cross yep. it, back and around, back and around. And that's how you get a 1,000 passes in a game without actually creating too many opportunities. Now, don't get me wrong, in the first half, we should have been up 3-1. to one. We should have had three goals. Pulisic should have had a brace. Yeah, Pulisic missed what would – to me, was two open players, McKenney and Balogun, right before the whistle blew for the first half, sitting all alone in the elf meter area. That's the penalty kick area. Wide open. Mm -hmm. And he went hero ball. He went hero ball on that. Um, Balogun, Balogun didn't get his all of his head on the header. What was the other one where we should have scored? Um uh, the uh, um, it was I don't the, know. The, the, uh, was the uh, it was the Musa? Uh, no, not Musa. It was the uh, Tillman opportunity and the two Plissix. Yeah, I don't know if any of those were one hundred percent. Those should have all gone in. But Tillman, yeah, Tillman, the Tillman was, one was the worst. At yeah. least make at least make Blake try. <laughs> right? Didn't and he, yes, he both, didn't both get of, it? Both of Plissix should have gone in the net. He would have put him in nine times out of ten. And he had that left-footed opportunity in the second half. Okay, if he placed it anywhere else in the in the goal uh, at the goal, it would have gone in. But he kicked it right at Blake. Yeah, I mean, so, I, I, the game I, I could mean, have been vastly different. It could have been vastly different, but it was still piss poor play, poor performances by key players, and slow transitions. Can I just mention these assholes at Paramount Plus? Just switched my channel. Mongolia right now, yeah. To USA versus Brazil. Oh, yeah. I so know. I didn't hit. I didn't hit the button fast enough. You didn't hit the Brazil. didn't didn't hit the button fast enough, and so now it switched me over to a game I've already watched. Women oh, USA women. versus Brazil. It's stupidest channel. Fix that, you idiots. Mm. Um.
I shouldn't have to be watching the television the whole time to stop it from doing and routing me to some mm. other game I've already watched. How well, ridiculous and, is that? And I guess while we're on the topic of uh, of the Paramount Plus crew, let's talk right. about that a little bit. The, the, mm. the elephant in the room there. We're sitting there at the end of our live stream talking, and I hear in my ear Jesse, Jesse Marsh, Marsh gushing over Reyna. Gushing over like oh, what a he, hypocrite! He, he 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 split the pass. He split the defense with these nice passes, and Hodges' goals were all all instrumental because of what he was able to bring to the team. And I'm like, dude, you were you were just flat out saying that he probably shouldn't have even been part of the team a few yeah. days ago. <laughs> and if I'm Davies, I'm calling him out. I'm like, listen, I'm really glad you're excited yeah. about what you saw from Dio Reyna. But in our last show. Or two shows ago, you were telling me, yeah, you went in a really hard decision for me to bring Reyna on this team. Does that show how incompetent of a national team coach that you would have been, Marsh? Because at least Greg got that right. Because he had no qualms. Mm -hmm. And then we had Jimmy Conrad on our show telling us, well, it's too bad that Greg has all this baggage because now he has no choice but to bring Gio Reyna. He has no choice mm. but to bring Gio Reyna? What are you kidding, Jimmy? Of course, he's, and we said it on the show. We said, of course, you're bringing Gio. I said it to his face. I said, of course, <laughs> we are bringing Gio Reyna. And he sort of kind of acquiesced, but not really, kind of. He's like, well, you know, you guys have your opinion or whatever. That's Come fine. on, man. Come uh, on. It's it's fine that we can have our opinion. And then you and I have no qualms with, with disagreeing with a guest on the show. We'll flat dude. out say, dude, what are you talking about? Of course well, you're going to bring him. Are you serious? <laughs> Well, the thing is, he didn't fight back, really. He just said, well, you know, whatever. That's cool. You know, you can, guys can do that. Or I don't know what exactly he said, but I do know it wasn't like a resounding yes, of course. I agree. He's got to be on the squad. I mean, there was this sort of reluctance by Jesse Marsh and Jimmy to bring him at all. Bring him on the squad at all, which to me is blasphemy. Blasphemy. So, Davies, congratulations to you, brother, because of the three of you, Davies got it right. And, Jimmy, we still love you, but, man, you got it well, kind of kind of wrong, and Marsh got it very wrong. Well, it very sounds, wrong. I mean, to some people it might sound like we're bagging on we're bagging on Jimmy, we're bagging on Jesse, which, to an extent, we kind of are. But we're also, we're also doing it in the sense of we all can disagree about things. And, yes, Derek yes. and I are 99% right, so you should just accept that we're right. In yeah, just write it down. <laughs> well, just Derek write it down. Says, oh, it's going to be that, right? We're just not <laughs> wrong very often, folks. I mean, that's not to brag. I'm just saying A that people, brag. people should listen to us. Yeah. Like, I mean, I kind of got the feeling that when we brought that up with Jimmy, he wasn't blowing it off, but he wasn't taking it seriously. He was like, yeah, it's too bad. There's all this baggage. Because if it wasn't, then there would be a coach who could either say yes or no, and they wouldn't have that baggage. Greg doesn't have that. There shouldn't be a decision for Greg to make, period, regardless of whatever happened with Reyna in, at the World Cup and his parents. You're bringing Gio Reyna. As Davey said, he's that big of a talent. In fact, he should have started tonight. He should have, honestly. He, he's a difference maker. And again, I, I can understand why Greg started Malik in this situation. You know, he's uh, Gio has, has gone like a month and a half, was getting maybe 10 minutes here, five minutes there, maybe one minute on this game. Um, so I can understand him going with the person who's probably more informed. However, as we said, since we would have started Gio, he is a difference maker on the pitch. And how much 100%. time How much time did he end up playing this game? Uh, the whole second half plus stoppage. So what is that? 45 and uh, 30 more. So 75 minutes total. Seems like he was match fit. Didn't seem tired at all. I mean, because at the end, at the end of the at the end of stoppage, he was sitting back more as an uh, almost like a six to an extent. Uh, but how many times did we have Pulisic come and play for us, and he wasn't playing for Chelsea, and he went played the whole game? Sure, 100. percent He played 80 minutes, 90 minutes, a Pepe's lot. Pepe's lucky to get 10 minutes. Just because you don't play doesn't mean you're match fit. Um, so uh, the patterns of play tonight were still the same patterns we see a lot, and we mentioned that already, mm -hmm. and that's still a problem. I didn't do it tonight except for one time, uh, maybe twice, where I'm like, and now we're going to pass it over here. Now yeah, we're going to pass it over there. Times, but it, it made sense with the play-by-play. -play. Right, 
Right. I guess so. But I mean, it was so obvious where we're going to go next. And that's kind of a problem with this team. The patterns of play are too, they're too, A, they're redundant in many ways. Sometimes we have players standing right next to each other playing the same role. What's that about? Mm-hmm. And other times, it's just too predictable, period. Well, and most, of, not most of them, some of the times we can get out of that predictability. By it, will, it can still be predictable, but we still uh, are able to capitalize on it because we have that talented of a squad, quite frankly. Yeah. But whenever, like I said, whenever whenever players that are usually on par as far as being consistent for the team, like Pulisic, like uh, Whale, like uh, McKinney and Jedi, when they all start having meh games, it breaks down. It, the predictability isn't creative enough, and there's not those flashes of brilliance that come out. Where we saw with, with Geo, he made he made two passes, four passes today that I saw nobody else able to complete anything like it at all today. Some people tried to do it, but then they failed because you know Jamaica got the ball or whatever. But nobody else was able to accomplish it. He did it right because he's the most talented passer on the United States men's national team. Period. End of story. No debate. There's no debate on this. You cannot tell me Malik Tillman has reached Reina mm. talent levels or that he could. He might be able to. I don't know. I don't see it. I, I see it a pretty bad for not a bad first 45 minutes for him, but not great by any means. Not great. I mean, I'm not saying that Malik Tillman can't be a very exceptional football player. He can. Mm-hmm. But he ain't going to reach the heights that Gio ran. And you can say whatever you want about Nottingham Forest. Yes, I'm going to have to buy Crow, eat it, cook it, eat it. Who knows? After, that. after this match, and who knows after Sunday's match, um, Nuno might actually be compelled to you know play him a little bit more here and there. And dropping four points on penalties. Yeah. Um, for, uh, what do they call that? PSA. Breach of profitability rules. Mm-hmm. So, and by the way, Leicester's facing that as well. Um, I don't think they're going to get penalized till after the season. So they'll be penalized once they, if they they'll start do. With a, they'll start with a negative deficit or deficit. In the Premier League, yeah, if they go back up. I was like uh, Juve when they went down to Sierra B. They started like uh, like negative 12 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they still ended up winning Serie B. Yeah, I mean, they beat everybody. Fuck it. No. <laughs> <laughs> what would so, imagine with the six players that stayed with the team? Yeah. So um, to write some of the player performances, you can stop me if you don't agree, but Turner was a B. He had some itchy moments, but I'm not. I Probably should have got something to that goal, but outside yeah. of that, I mean, the questionable with his foot play, but. Yep. Richards, a C. I thought Richards was below his average. He let a breakaway go. I'm, I'm, I would be tempted to say C minus at minimum there because yeah. again, yeah, he got turned around a couple times. His passes forward were either safe or not effective. He wasn't um, good. I don't. I don't I, I, yeah, I would say I would say it was a, kind of a below average performance, quite frankly. And all the people who don't like Tim Ream because he's old and slow. Well, I can tell you one thing: they got absolutely snatched and cut off and totally eradicated out of this game by not having a Tim Ream or if you would like John Brooks, but we know John Brooks will never play for this team, but he's the only other guy playing center back with a U.S. Uh, you know background that can do what Ream does, and that is switch fields with a long pass. We didn't see a, a single long pass switching fields from a center back all night. We didn't also see a single line-breaking pass from a center back all night. Not a single one. So you can go ahead and play your Miles Robinson if you want to and Chris Richards and leave out a guy like Tim Ream if you want. But I can tell you this. There are certain things you're not going to get anymore because Mm -hmm. none of them, no one else in our center back pool can do what Tim Ream does with through passes, cutting lines, and switching fields. The only other guy who can do it is John Brooks, and he's banned from the team. So there you go. To coin Happy. phrase from Larry, yeah. 
Um, we did have a, we did start seeing those type of passes occurring from Adams when he came in, of mm-hmm. course. So he was lacing those change of field yes. uh, uh, points of attack, and that opened up the attack. Yes, and I know. I know there there are definitely people who are out there that uh, don't really rate Adams, and they're like, "Oh God, you know, he has this, he has he has his, he has his faults. Absolutely, there's certain aspects of his game that aren't as good as say Musa's, but there are some there are definitely aspects of Adams' games that are better than Musa's. He looked That's a hell of a lot. He looked a hell of a lot more settled and comfortable playing that role than Musa did tonight. So, uh, well, the big, the big thing is that again, Musa's big deficit today was that he held the ball, he held onto the ball too long, and he made bad passes. He looked. Adam doesn't hold onto the ball. He takes one touch and passes the ball immediately. The difference between those two is soccer IQ and maturity. And Adams has both, and he's a leader. Look at how pissed off he was coming off the pitch. He <laughs> wanted he wanted to be there for his guys. Yeah. Even though there was already an agreed upon minutes limitation with his club Bournemouth that Greg could not break. Greg, if you're a manager of the national team and you have talked Bournemouth into, well, I mean, there's no talking, but you've had a conversation with the B- Bournemouth man- management and they're like, yeah, he's, pretty much fit to play about 30 minutes a game so if you could could you please do that please just please. and if you want to stay in good terms with Bournemouth you better follow what they tell you and especially I'm sure they ran tests on Adams when he got there mm-hmm. and it said the same thing he's about 30 35 minutes well, fit yeah and Adams so, had mentioned he, he felt he was 45 to 60 minutes fit well, he, like some people sparked, like, oh, is he going to start? I'm like, oh, he's not going to start. Are you serious? I mean, you can feel whatever you want to feel. But if yeah. you're Greg and you make an agreement with a club to bring a player and you're you're saying, we'll treat him good. We promise we won't get him injured. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll have a minute's limitation. You want to keep good relations with the team, which is always preferable. Then you're going to do, you know, you're going to try to do what, they recommend. Then that's what he did. So you can't blame Greg for yanking um, Adams off the field. You also can't blame Greg for the team setup. The team starting 11 was a good starting 11. That's not where Greg's falling off. Greg's falling off because of patterns of play and his predictable system and his inability to allow creativity in the final third. Right? Yeah. I mean, it, it, a lot of people, <laughs> yeah, his, his big issue is the system. Right. It's predictable. Uh, Jamaica's figured us out because teams like El Salvador has figured us out and teams like Trinidad and Tobago have figured us out. Three teams that we should, in fact, beat. I mean, I know Jamaica is getting better, of course, 100%. But at this point, we should, we have the talent we have on the pitch and on our bench, we should, on paper, beat them every time. And this but, is a Jamaica missing five of their best players. Exactly. So they again, it was one of those things where the the opposing manager understood how 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 our system fails, and he he implemented an attack and a defense that worked perfectly for it. He's not the only one though. No, he's that's not. the problem. Like everybody knows, you can press us when we're deep in our own end. Press. You just have to be ready to fall back to a mid block when we get out of that and then fall back to a low block when we get into their end of the, of the field deep into it. It's just so simple. It's yep. so simple how to set up and, and, and cause us issues because we don't, when people come after us, when they play a press, we never play. Oh, okay. We saw a couple balls over the top. All right. There were some, there were some, you know, opportunities we tried to take over the top but generally no we just play it out of the back and kick it around we don't look for that uh, long ball that can expose a high uh, a press nope so there you go i did uh, like i did like the likes of uh Wea and who else took shots from outside the box uh musa took one reina reina took one later he, he, he um, didn't even try taking one i think so something like that I don't know. I, I appreciate the fact that they at least tried taking shots outside the box. Now, some players I think are going to be more likely to score outside there, especially way away. That's bread and butter. 
that's where he scores 90% of his goals. <laughs> but yep. um, that, that was because we talked about that in the Trinidad and Bagel game. We we're like, how do you break down a, a low press, a, a bunkered team, a team that's bunkering inside and around that box? Well, you start, you start making them guess, hey, well, we're going to give them this opportunity outside the box. Well, now that they're taking shots, we better start marking them closer. And it's right. going to open up little pockets and break them down. If you're not willing to take a shot from outside the box, then they're just going to sit on the line. Mm-hmm. You got to make them come out and get you and respect the long shot. And we still don't do it enough. Even in this game, I know we'd had a few, but we need more. We need yep. to have guys that can shoot it 10 yards outside of the box and be dangerous. But we really don't have any players like that except for Reyna. Like Reyna has a fuck a freaking cannon for a, for a leg. And yeah. we don't have enough guys like that. Pulisic is not going to threaten you 10 yards outside of the box. And he knows it. And everybody Way, else Way will do it is the other one. And that's about, yeah. it. that's about it right there, actually. Yeah, we don't have a lot of guys with rocket legs. Um, Cardoso, but he didn't play enough to have that sort of opportunity. I mean, he played enough, but, you know, we didn't see that kind of shot. I mean, we've seen bombs from him in La Liga this year that were rockets. So we know he can do it. We just didn't see him do it tonight. Yeah. Um, as far as the, the grades go, Musa for me gets a D. Um, yeah. Reyna and or Tillman, uh, C, average, not his best game. Yeah. Wea, C minus, not his best game. Christian Pulisic, most of the game is a C minus, but I'll give him a C plus in the end. And I mean, Ballo, let, me, let, me give, let me give let me give Pulisic like a B minus C plus just because you know, at least you know he was drawing fouls. Yeah, but That's still good. wasn't the best Christian Pulisic. Oh, hundred percent no. No, you know, no one of the, so one I'd of say them. average for him. Yeah, at, at best. And then Ballo, yeah. Once they score, you're done. Ballo's done because they're going to sit back when you get possession into their area in a block. That's and Ballo true. can't play with his back to goal. He's horrible with his back to goal. He's not getting on a cross. He's not a header guy. He's a through the lines guy. He's a you know a, a long pass guy a through through the lines guy. He's a runner. He's a speedster. Like he ain't gonna hold up the ball. How many incompetent holdups did Ballo have tonight? Yeah, it was bad. Yeah. Well, I mean, quite frankly, with that five four one, I don't think that they made the decision to, to uh, how they played on the defense. Because they're up one goal, I think they had that game plan from the get go. I think, Bello, the whole time. yeah, I think Bello was going to be more or less useless. In hindsight, of course, hindsight. right, right. I can sit back and go, oh, well, this, this, and this. But yeah, in hindsight, it's easy for me to say, well, they were going to do that anyways, and it's going to make basically Balogun useless unless he but, happened to catch hold of one thing. But I mean, Trinidad played the exact same game plan versus hmm? versus. I mean. High press, mid block to low block, switch. I mean, it's not impossible for teams to do that. Teams don't have to just play a mid block or just play a low block or just press. You can press when pressing. They did all three. <laughs> yes. Well, so did Trinidad at times too. So have other teams like El Salvador have done it to us too. They never draw back into a low block until it's obvious that a low block needs to happen. And when yeah. they do, because we are not a quick transition team. We are not a team that re- reacts uh, in cr- in transition quickly. We are not a counter team. We're what, like counter. We don't even know what the word counter means anymore. The United States men's national team has completely abandoned something we were great at for mm-hmm. almost a decade or more. We don't even know what the word counter attack means. We have all, no clue what that word means. It all None. started with the uh, all started with Klinsman. Having to break down the the uh, the idea of the uh, um, who we were it's to try to find a new uh, who we were, you know. Until he got to the World Cup and he changed his whole yeah, exactly freaking but then, song and, that, and dance. And that carried over though, because then um, I mean, VA came in and he he sort of just carried on the normal sense with old fogies. But then Berhalter came in. He's like, ah, I have this idea. Along with U.S. Soccer, that we're gonna we're gonna create a system, a an identity. That's the word I wanted to all the mm-hmm. time. An identity, an American identity, and this is how we're gonna play it. We're gonna do this from the ground up, and we're gonna be great at it. Yeah, and okay. uh, like okay, that whole idea of 
creating an identity is so ridiculous because guess what? Everything evolves, but it shouldn't happen overnight, right? I mean, Germany evolved into a different type of team um, over the years, and but it felt quite like natural. It kind of evolved in a natural way. This doesn't seem natural. Like you can't forget how to counterattack and be quick on the transition. That's not something a team should forget how to do, but they certainly don't know how to do it under Greg. You let me know when the next time we yeah. score on a counterattack or a quick transition, because we don't do it. We just don't do it. We don't try it. So we aren't going to score any. Pepe, uh, I'll give him a, I don't know, a B minus. I mean, he was all right. Um, Adams, I'd give him like an A. I think when he was in there, we were the most settled. He was yep. very calm. Uh, Haji Wright gets an A for sure. Great goal. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Aronson, I'll give him a B. It wasn't Demon Aronson. It wasn't Dark Gray Brendan. Yeah, it wasn't Dark Brendan. Uh, mm -hmm. It was, he did what he usually does, run around a lot. And then uh, Cardoso didn't get enough time. I don't yeah, really want to get well known, yeah. And then Reina gets an A plus. So you're saying Reina's your man of the match? Yes. Yeah, Reina, Reina and Haji would have been one of those two. Yeah, yeah, I mean, flip a coin on that one if you want. But I mean, until Reina came on, there was no creativity, there was no artistry, there was no. Um, yeah, it was just bland. It was, um, you know. Pancakes without uh, cinnamon and vanilla. It was uh, pancakes with just flour and, and egg. No seasoning. And then, you know, he came in and, and tried to, to make things different. Mm -hmm. So, oh, you got to have an egg in there, too, for pancakes. But um, but there was definitely no additional flavors added. And mm -hmm. Raina came in and he added some flavor to the game. Wasn't immediately successful, obviously. No. But um, it took a while. He only got 45 minutes to make a difference. But by the extra time, I mean, genius. The hey, genius you know, we would, have, we would have scored at least three or four off of corners if he was taking them. Yeah, that's another thing. Good point. Pulisic needs to stop taking corners. He's Seriously. bad at them. How he's, long have we been saying this? <laughs> he's, he's just atrocious at it. He's yeah. just bad. Like, the few times we have got to see Reina take corners, they're immaculate. They're perfect. Not all the time. No, he's not 100% perfect, but he's a lot better than Reyna is at taking set pieces and corners. So mm -hmm. can we stop with the Reyna taking set pieces, please? I mean, with the Pulisic, Pulisic, Pulisic taking set pieces should stop. It needs to end. Uh, um, Tillman's, uh, Tillman's free kick was pretty good. He's better at it than Pulisic, honestly, even though that one went way over. Yeah. But he is actually better at it than Pulisic. And Pulisic, don't fake like you're going to take a free yeah. kick with your left what? foot from 30 yards out. No one believes that. Like, you, you have a good left foot, but it ain't that good from 30 yards out. Like, he's not a rocketer. You Let me know last time Pulisic scored a goal from 30 yards out of the box. Yeah. I can't remember one, honestly. Can't. So, all right, that's all I got, Brett. Okay, so that'll wrap this up. We will be back Monday, probably with more talk about this and other things. We'll talk about the Mexico game, uh, the result there, and uh, when is the final? Sunday. What so, time? Sh shit, we'll be talking Sunday, uh, about yeah. Monday, about the Sunday game, unless we do another live one, Brad, on Sunday. We're good. What time is it? Uh, we'll, we'll find that out. Yeah, I don't, it'll take me way too long to pull it up, and let's just end this episode right here. Yeah, we'll let you know. And uh, thanks for subscribing and and uh, liking; those do help us. So make sure you do that here at the end of this video. And uh, we'll be back on uh, could be Sunday, so keep your eye out for it. We might do it live, depending on family factors and all the other stuff that goes on weekends, where you might have a thing or two else you need to get done. Uh, until then. Um, We'll be back soon on the straight red card. Good night.